Welcome to Shankar IAS Academy's daily newspaper analysis 24th October 2024. Let's see today's topic of discussion. The first article is declaring Jama Masjid protected monument will have substantial impact. This article is taken from Indian Express. In this article, we are going to see in detail about Jama Masjid and its protection status. Why Delhi High Court said de declaring Jama Masjid protected monument will create substantial impact. The second article of discussion is stubble burning which violates right to clean environment. This article is taken from the Hindu newspaper. In this article, we are going to discuss what is stubble burning, how stubble burning violates right to clean environment. The third article of discussion is Prime Minister Narendra Modi said BRICS nation to strengthen financial integration. This article is taken from the Hindu newspaper. This In this article, we are going to see 16th BRICS summit and its importance. Without any delay, let us get into the article. This article talks about the Archaeological Survey of India told the Delhi High Court that declaring Jama Masjid as a protected monument will disturb the socio-religious harmony in the region. Let us see the key facts about Jama Masjid. It was built under Mughal Emperor of Shah Jagan in the year between 1644 to 1656. It is one of the largest mosque in India made up of red sandstone and white marbles. This monument was well known for its architectural blend with Islamic, Persian and Indian style. In this monuments, there are three architectural highlights. They are three large dooms which can be seen in this picture and two mirrors in 40 meters and also arched entrances. With this, let us see the key objectives of protected monuments under Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Survey and Remains Act 1958. Conservation Archaeological Survey of India maintains and restores the monuments and its surrounded spaces. Activity Regulation There are strict rules apply within a 100 meter prohibited zone and a 200 meters regulated zone. They restricted any other activities which affects the monument's structure. Encroachment Prevention Archaeological Survey of India removes illegal encroachments around the monuments. Archaeological Survey of India promotes the site for tourism and research. After that, these monuments are protected under Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Survey and Remains Act 1958 through the Archaeological Survey of India administered under Ministry of Culture. With this information, let us move on to the current issues with respect to protection of Jama Masjid. Currently, this masjid is go gone under religious activities and a place of worship. If it is announced protected, it will restrict religious and community activities happen there. And another one is conflict between existing authorities. This mosque was administered under Delhi Wahab board and managed by Archaeological Survey of India. To avoid this conflict, Delhi High Court suggests some of the measures. They are form a joint committee with Archaeological Survey and Wahab Board, government should explore collaborative conservation without disturbing religious functions and also consider Jama Masjid as partially protected monument. With this information, let us conclude this article with prelims practice question. With reference to ancient monument and archaeological sites and remains act 1958, consider the following statements. Statement 1. The Archaeological Survey of India is responsible for declaring monuments as protected under the Act. Once a monument is declared protected, construction activities within a 500 meters radius are strictly prohibited. Religious monuments that are actively used for worship cannot be declared protected under the Act. Which of the statement given above is or are correct? Option A, 1 only. Option B, 1 and 2 only. Option C, 2 and 3 only. Option D, 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option A, 1 only. With this, let us move on to next article. This article speaks about the importance of 16th BRICS summit. In this summit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, BRICS nation should strengthen the financial integration. With this statement, let us get into the BRICS is an acronym of five major emerging economies. They are Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. 
with this information let us get into the formation and emergence of BRICS. Initially in 2006, it was started as BRIC with the member of Brazil, Russia, India and China. After that in 2009, its first formal meet was conducted in Russia. After that in 2010, BRIC was expanded into BRICS with the joining of South Africa with other member nations. Let us move on to the objectives of BRICS. Its, its foremost objective is promoting economic growth and development, reforming global financial institutions, enhancing multilateral trade between member countries, encouraging cooperation in science, technology and innovation. From this, let us see the significance of BRICS in India's development. It creates platform for economic cooperation. It promotes South-South cooperation. It creates more investment opportunities and infrastructure development. And also it creates and also it creates cooperation in counter-terrorism, cyber security and climate change. With this, let us move on to key objectives of BRICS in financial integration. New development banks, contingent reserve, currency swap agreement, BRIC payment system. Uh, let us see this in detail. 2004, new development bank. It is established in 2014 to support infrastructure and sustainable development projects. It reduces dependency on US dollars. It also promotes many projects. The major projects are major projects are renewable energy and urban infrastructure. With this, let us move on to contingent reserve agreement. In 2014, 100 billion fund was created to provide liquidity support to BRICS members during balance of payment crisis. It aims to promote member countries from external financial stocks reducing the need for IMF assistance. It aims to protect member economies from external finance stocks, financial stocks reducing the need for IMF assistance. The next one is currency swap agreement. BRICS countries, BRICS countries have initiated local currency swap agreement to facilitate trade and investment without relying on the US dollars. This will enhance monetary cooperation and reduces currency, reduce currency volatility risk. And the BRICS payment system, it is an alternate payment system to bypass western financial systems. This could, this could promote smoother and more independent gross border transactions among members strengthening economic sovereignty. With this, let us conclude this article with prelims practice question. Which of the following is not a founding member of BRICS? Option A, Brazil. Option B, India. Option C, South Africa. Option D, China. The answer is South Africa. Option C. With this, let us move on to next article. In this article, Supreme Court criticized the Punjab and Haryana government for selectively penalized a few farmers for stubble burning while letting many others escape with nominal fines, which violates the citizens' right to a pollution-free environment under Article 21. The court emphasized the need of stricter enforcement and machinery under the Environment Protection Act 1986. With this information, let us get into the article. Now, let us see what is stubble burning. Stubble burning is the practice of setting fire to the leftover crops, crop residues after after harvesting grains like wheat and paddy, it is a major environmental issue in India, especially in the northern states such as Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. With this definition, let us see the major environmental impacts of stubble burning. Air pollution, it releases harmful gases like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide which contribute to pollution and climate change. Contribution to smog, it impacts in air quality, health hazards such as respiratory and lung diseases, soil degradation. Because of burning, leftover nutrition of soil is degraded, which directly impact in soil health, which, which directly impact in soil health. Reduced visib visibility during because of smog created in the atmosphere, which leads to accidents. Impact on biodiversity. Stubble burning can harm local biodiversity, particularly small insects, birds and small mammals around the location where crop residues are burnt. With this, let us move on to the pros and cons of 
stubble burning. First, let us see the advantages of stubble burning. Farmers clear their fields quickly and cheaply without needing to spend on labor or machineries. Timely land preparation. Burning stubbles allow farmers to prepare their land for the next crop cycle, next crop cycle, especially between rice and wheat cultivation. And another one is prevention of pest infestation. Farmers believe that stubble burning helps in reducing pest infestation by killing pests and their eggs in the residual stubble. And let's move on to disadvantages of stubble burning. Continuous burning diminishes the soil's fertility. India's international reputation as country tackling climate change gets affected by, by these activities. Inefficient in resource utilization, economic and health cost. Because of this, not only economic cost, it also creates health impacts on air pollution caused by stubble burning, led to increased healthcare costs for both government and individuals. With this information, let's see how this impacts the right to clean environment. It affects fundamental rights under Article 21. In this case, the Supreme Court restated that every citizen has a right to live in a pol pollution-free environment under Article 21. Lack of proper machinery. The court pointed out that absence of proper mechanism for enforcing penal penalties under Section 15 of Environment Protection Act 1986. Environmental laws. Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. This, this provides the regulation of air pollution for agricultural activities like stubble burning. States are mandated to control activities contributing to air pollution including enforcing fines and penalties. With this information, let's conclude this article with prelims practice question. Consider the following statements regarding stubble burning in India. Statement 1. Stubble burning contributes to air pollution by releasing harmful gases like carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. Statement 2. The Supreme Court of India has declared that stubble burning violates the right to a clean environment under Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. The Environment Protection Act 1986 has specific provision for penalizing those involved in stubble burning. From this, which of the statements given above is or are correct? Option A. 1 only, option B, 1 and 2 only, option C, 2 and 3 only, option D, 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option D, 1, 2 and 3. That's all about today's articles. In the conclusion, if you like this video, share it to your friends, give your valuable comments and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you.